God of unveiled truth, faithful flames in times of darkened sun and waning moon. Lift up our unknowing hearts and waken our sleeping love to announce the coming of dawn, coming dawn of unexpected peace through Jesus Christ, the one who is to come. Amen. Please be seated. We began our readings today with the fervent prayer. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. We end them with the command to keep awake. Isaiah speaks from a time when Israel had been defeated and lived in exile. The people prayed daily for deliverance from their oppressors. Jesus' words in the Gospel of Mark are from a time when the persecution of the people of Israel is again high. The temple is about to be destroyed when this book was finally put down in words. The early Christian believers were themselves persecuted by the Romans in authority and by the Jewish people. Some things never seem to change. The words are strong and repeated three times for emphasis in this gospel. Keep alert, keep awake, keep awake. Advent begins this morning and we light our first candle. We keep watch during the darkness of winter. Last night, the sun set at 419. I know that because I had my phone on and it dims on purpose when the sun sets so that I stopped staring at this bright thing. We wait for the light to return to our world, for the light of Jesus to re be reborn in our hearts, for the light of Christ to tear open the heavens and usher in a new way of life. Waiting for this is a hard thing to do. Our Western culture does not do waiting. We want to get in on Christmas shopping early. Stuff has been in the stores since actually before Halloween. Santa comes the day after Thanksgiving, if not before. Christmas music has been playing since God knows when. And by the time the day finally arrives, most of us are so sick of all of it. We can't wait for it to be over. But take heart. Valentine's stuff will be in the stores on January 1st. That truly is the bane of our existence. That is not the metaphor I would pick to describe what Jesus is asking for us to wait and watch for. Neither does Jesus, for that matter. He says nature is a better image. The fig tree would have worked well for its listeners in the Middle East. For us, it might be watching the leaves finally fall off the trees after weeks of barely hanging on. I'm not sure what kept them on the trees in my yard. I mean, it had already been really windy. But a couple of weeks ago, en masse, they were gone. Maybe it's more like waiting for the snow or waiting for the daffodils or the tulips to come up in March and April. Time has its own rhythm and knows just when to act. All of the things that we read about today were about waiting for and waking up to the freedom and joy in being the people we long to be, the people that God longs us to be. And what we get is Jesus saying, things are in the works. They're already happening. You know what they really look like. You recognize them. Wake up. Open your eyes. Watch for them. A college professor asked a freshman class to write an essay in a writing program that he was teaching. This is how one student began. Last year, I awoke from a coma that lasted for 18 years. This is a freshman in college, mind you. The coma was called my life. 
the student went on to write how during high school, she had fallen into the hands of a spectacularly gifted teacher who had, who she said, got in my face, grabbed me by the neck, shook me up and down and make me take for the first time in my life, an honest look at my life. The encounter with that teacher was for her, she said, an awakening. Perhaps our culture, which serves as a means of lulling people to sleep with endless doing and buying, should listen to this young woman. These next generations that are coming along, our children and our children's children, they understand the world in ways that we do not, except for a couple of you. The powers that be would lull us to sleep by telling us that they have our best interests at heart. They prey on our weaknesses, our fears, our prejudices, our wants over our needs. Perhaps the church ought to ponder the ways that people are awakened and focus on that. When it happens, it's like Christmas and Easter all rolled into one. A person wakes up as this new beginning, this new thing, this new creature. And most of us here know exactly what that feels like. Awakening. We can't hold on to it for some reason, but we all pretty much know what it's like, that crystallized moment. Otherwise, I doubt we'd be here. The message we should hear from the church at this time of year is to quit being duped by the world's frantic need to stay in a coma. Pay attention to the ways of God. It is the message I'd like to invite us into for these next four weeks. What might you hear or see, or learn, if you could do this for the next month, just four weeks. I don't mean to say that we shouldn't prepare for the season, or that we should be stuffy old boars who shout out, bah humbug. Church doesn't have to be an ogre. It shouldn't be an ogre. We're supposed to be an image of hope for those who are lost in the darkness about a life without Christ. The young child of a priest colleague of mine once said, but dad, the lights and the tree are how I prepare for Christmas, are how I prepare for the coming of Jesus. Like, yeah. In the midst of all our preparation, keep awake, be aware. Ask yourself what you're doing when you're doing it and why. That's the shift. I'm inviting us into. It's nothing radical, but it is extremely radical. What are we waiting for? Why do we need to be awake? To be honest, it is for Jesus to get in our faces, grab us by our necks, shake us up and down, and make us take for the very first time in our lives, maybe, an honest look at our lives, your life my life. Is there any chance that we who already know of Christ's coming have fallen asleep to the signs? That we take them for granted like the coming of spring and forget to pay attention to the joy and freedom of it all. We may not be a people of exile, but there are those in the world who are. We may not be a people who are persecuted for our beliefs, but there are many who are. We may not be a people who think we are living in darkness, even though we really are. But the reality is we all yearn for the light and for the light of Christ. It is only when we are awake and aware that we can see and be with this light of Christ and then to become the light of Christ to those who need to see in the darkness. It is only then that we can act in ways that can stop things like violence and hatred, like bigotry, anti-Semitism, which is running rampant in the world right now, and racism. 
I found this wonderful Advent prayer the other day by retired United Methodist Bishop William Willimon. Pray it with me. Jesus, we keep praying that you will come among us. We keep asking you to say something to us, to speak a word that will comfort, guide, and sustain us. We keep demanding that you come down among us and set right what's wrong with the world. We keep expecting that one day at last you will show yourself among us, heal our illness, work justice, and make the world to come out right. But Jesus, maybe you have already come, and we just don't have the eyes to see you. Perhaps you are already walking beside us, and if we had the grace to look up and greet you there, you are continually speaking to us, judging us, guiding us, if we only had the courage to open our eyes to wake up, to come out of the coma. Grant us that courage, that insight and vision, that in seeing you, we might serve you. In hearing you, we might obey you. And in loving you, we might follow you. Amen. <laughs>